Hey guys, Heather here from Tie Dye Iguana, and today we're going to talk about carnivorous plants, and more specifically, how each one manages to catch bugs, because each one of them does it in a different way. Now here we've got our three different plants that we have in stock right now at the store, the three different carnivorous plants. We usually have a fourth one, we usually have uh, the Venus flytrap. Uh, we'll still talk about a little bit about that one today, but we'll focus on these three that we have right now. So first up, we're going to talk about the Mexican butterwort. Now Mexican butterworts are a smaller type of plant. They don't get too big. Um, they usually look like this, except in the spring they can form uh, really small little flowers that are either uh, white, purple, yellow, or pink. Now if you look really closely, you can see how these guys trap their uh, bugs that they like to eat. If you look at that leaf, you can see that it looks pretty shiny. These guys, they secrete a really sticky, sweet substance on their leaves that attracts the, uh, the flies, the little gnats as you can see here, fruit flies, gnats, all that sort of stuff. And they land on the leaf and get trapped in the goo and they can't get out. It kind of works like, it's kind of like natural fly paper. Like instead of getting the, the sticky fly traps that you've uh, paper traps that you find in stores, you can just get one of these and it works really good too. Now once the insect has landed on the leaf, the leaf will start to secrete an enzyme that will digest the bug and break it down so that the plant can absorb its nutrients. Now one thing to note about your butterworts is that you want to use only distilled or RO water to water them because they're super sensitive to any other type of uh, like chemicals in the water, uh, salts and everything. They're really sensitive to all that. So you wanna make sure you use the purest water possible for these guys or they'll die. All right, so next up we got the little itty bitty sundews that we have in right now. These are small, but they do get much bigger. And um, this one is actually flowering, getting ready to flower. That stalk you see that is uh, in those little buds, that's where the flower is going to bloom. And these guys are a little bit different than the butterworts we just looked at. These guys also have that flypaper type of uh, strategy to catch the insects uh, on them, but they're a little bit different. Now, if you look really closely at our sundew here, as best as we can, you see all those little tiny tentacles. They almost look like hairs on them. Now, those little tentacles, they are covered with a glob of uh, this sticky, sugary, sweet substance that attracts the insect to fly over and land on the plant. Now, once they land amongst all those uh, little tentacles, the tentacles, uh, they get trapped in them. And once they get trapped, and the leaf will start to curl in on itself. You can kind of see these guys, they're kind of curling a little bit there. Those leaves will really curl in and uh, basically smother the insect in their leaves and then they'll secrete the enzyme that starts to digest them. So they're a little bit more active in their, uh, in their fly catching abilities. Next we'll talk about the Venus flytrap. Now these guys, uh, as far as movement goes, these guys, you see them move a lot more uh, quickly than the previous two we talked about. These guys, they actually have like three hairs on the inside of each of those traps. Like they have three hairs inside. And uh, they secrete a really sweet sugary substance inside the each half of their uh, leaves. And of course they got those teeth. Well, when the fly lands in the trap, it triggers those hairs that are sticking out and it causes the leaf to quickly close around them and trap them inside. And that's when they'll secrete uh, the enzymes to digest them. Now this next one we're going to talk about uh, doesn't involve any movement at all. This plant doesn't have to fold up or do anything. It basically just sits there. This is the pitcher plant. And you can see we've got a nice big pitcher right here and a little bit of a smaller one right there. And these are some old ones that have already, uh, I think this is an old one that kind of shriveled up. Now a pitcher plant, you, we get a nice close up here. You can see it's got a little rim there. And the pitcher plant basically uses bright colors and uh, sometimes they secrete a sweet nectar on the rim of the plant to attract a fly to come in. 
So what happens is, uh, when the fly or gnat or whatever comes flying in, attracted by the nectar or the bright colors, once it lands on that rim there, uh, the rim is really slippery. So they'll fall into uh, the cavity of the leaf and down into where they usually have a liquid stored down there. They'll fall into that liquid and it's a digestive uh, substance. So it'll break down the fly or insect or whatever. It'll break them down and uh, into nutrients that the plant can absorb. So once they're trapped in that sticky substance, they're not gonna get back out because you know they can't climb the sides. The sides are really slippery and everything and the uh, the liquid can be pretty gooey and stuff and can trap them in there and they can't get out. So that's basically how that works. <laughs> so yeah, that's a little bit about how each of the four types of carnivorous plants that we usually carry here at Tide Eyed Iguana, that's how they catch the bugs and why they work so well. If you have like fruit flies or gnats in your house, you can buy one of these little plants uh, instead of buying like fly paper or other insect traps, you can buy one of these and they can really help out. Especially if you put them in a place where you're having the problem. I know some people have issues with fruit flies in like kitchens and places like that. So they put them on the little windowsill in the kitchen and it'll catch those uh, pesky bugs. So if you ever have a little pest problem and you want to have a little bit of fun catching them and everything, uh, you can always pick up a carnivorous plant to uh, catch them for you. As always, thanks for watching today. We hope you enjoyed that video about our carnivorous plants. And uh, we'll see you next time.